Welcome to Tsuji This Week. I'm Siri Su. Thank you for joining us. Coming up in our top story, Tsuji volunteers in Malaysia offer assistance to rural Python of Sabah, ensuring students can learn properly. Next in Cambodia, Tsuji volunteers host a Buddha Day ceremony, helping to purify people's hearts. Lastly, we meet Jennifer Ruiz, a volunteer who has taken on the responsibility of spreading Tsuji in Ecuador. Tsuji volunteers in Malaysia have been caring for underprivileged students and individuals in Paitan Sabah. Recently, a group of Tima members headed to remote areas in Paitan to check on the health and living conditions of the patients. Meanwhile, Tsuji volunteers held an aid distribution in Paitan and they used this occasion to help build a dormitory for students from Takarensa Elementary School. They also gave the school a water purifier to ensure that students will have clean water to drink. Students from SK Tangrasong have to spend 90 minutes walking from their home to school. However, they are unable to go to school during the rainy season, leading Tsuji to decide to build a dormitory for them. Some children live in remote areas and when floods come, they usually don't have adults by their side. It's also dangerous for them to walk home. We think there's an urgent need to build a dormitory for them. When the dry season comes, these children can only drink the water in the pond. Tsuji volunteers give this school a water purifier so that the children will have clean water to drink. The water we use here is rainwater. We don't have tap water. So when we cook, we have to use water wisely to save it. Without perfect equipment, we still need to proceed with what we aim to accomplish. This is really not easy. Tima members also bring this love to a village when they visit a paralyzed man who has been bedridden for five years. In the past, no doctor would come to my home. Thank you all for checking my health. You are very kind-hearted since you provide assistance to me. Actually, he needs to do rehabilitation and later receives medical treatment at the hospital. Tsuji brothers and sisters will send him to the hospital. Tima members in Malaysia head to remote areas to care for the patients who are in need, as well as check their living condition. In the past, the grandma always lied in bed and she never moved. They used to sleep in the kitchen because it was more convenient for the grandma to go to the toilet. So when we visited her before, we had to go over there to see her. Today, what surprised us is that she was energetic and she said she wanted to come to the front of the room. Despite their poor living condition, they pass on volunteer spirits by carrying out the acts of giving to help the less fortunate people. We take a closer look at the school supply distribution. Tsuji volunteers held at six schools in Sabah's Paitan, as well as free dental services for local residents. <laughs> Tsuji volunteers in Malaysia work together to load these boxes onto the truck. They later head to Paitan to hold an aid distribution and free clinic. Among them, 18 are Tsuji alumni from Kuala Lumpur who are helping out at a distribution for the first time. After nearly a four-hour journey, Tsuji volunteers divide into different groups, heading to six different schools in Paitan. Here at the SMK Simpang'an, 281 students are waiting for the distribution. Children living in the city are really fortunate because there are many bookstores around their home. They can easily find these books. But for the children living in remote areas, they have to walk far away from their home to the city to get school supplies. I am very happy because I received Tsuji's assistance. They helped us students who lack school supplies. Residents in Paitam have to travel a long distance to see a dentist, and they cannot afford the transportation fee. At this free clinic, Tima daughters provide them with dental services. It's difficult because it costs 13 U.S. dollars for each person to go from Paitan to Kota Marudu to see a dentist. We feel very grateful because this service can at least reduce the burden of the residents in Paitan. You feel grateful that you get a chance to come and provide some service. 
for them, uh, it's usually like this. If they are working, they have to take leave. So one day salary is gone to go and have one tooth extracted. La. So if we come and provide service, uh, it's very helpful for them. For many years, Tsuji has continued to hold free medical clinics and add distributions for the residents in Python, providing them with warmth and love. In Kuala Lumpur recently, Tsuji held a Mother's Day event for children to wash their parents' feet. One participant at the event was Mr. Vincent Tan, a successful entrepreneur. Parents and their children are seated together here at the Jing Se Hall in Kuala Lumpur. <laughs> Over 100 children are here to bathe their parents' feet to express their filial piety. One of them washing their mother's feet is Mr. Vincent Tan, who is the founder of the Berjaya Corporation. Mr. Tan is washing his mother's feet for the first time and is especially focused on the task. In line with Buddha's teaching, our mother are also like our Buddhas. So I'm very pleased and my mother also has said that she's very happy in her 90 years. Maybe because I wash her feet today, it's the only time I wash her feet in my life. Vincent Tan is 65 years old this year, and although his work keeps him very busy, he never forgets to fulfill his filial duties. For Mother's Day this year, he chose to wash her feet as an expression of his gratitude. I am 90 years old, and today is the happiest I've ever been. I want to thank the Master for everything. Now my granddaughter is participating in Tsuji events, and I'm very happy she has become such a good and filial granddaughter. I'll continue to praise the Buddha for the rest of my life. There is never a better time than the present to express filial piety and gratitude to one's parents. Whether bathing their feet or giving them a loving hug, even the smallest actions can convey a deep love. Also celebrating the Buddha's birth, but in Cambodia, Tsuji volunteers recently held a Buddha Day ceremony at the Tsuji office. In the yard on the fourth floor, volunteers in Cambodia have decorated the venue for the Buddha Day ceremony mindfully. More than a hundred people have come to attend the ceremony, paying respects to the Buddha. The volunteers strike the bell and drum, which struck a chord in people's hearts. As the attendees worship the Buddha, they also purify their minds. It is different. This purifies our minds where others only worship the Buddha. This is how it is different. Coming here, our hearts have been very pure. We feel like we are seeing the Buddha. <laughs> the attendees also pay tributes to their parents. When we come down, I thought about how my parents took care of me when I was little. Now that I'm busy with studying, I seldom see them. I miss them very much. Some people have been inspired to join the ranks of volunteers to benefit the public. Since I feel the happy atmosphere here, I also put on a volunteer uniform. As people's compassion is inspired, their minds also become purified. Tsuji volunteers in Malaysia recently held their second free clinic in Telapagria in seven years. At the free clinic, services from 13 departments were provided. Meanwhile, Tima volunteers in Taiwan also provided another regular free clinic for the homeless in Taichung. <laughs> Dr. Lin, who retired half a year ago, is taking part in the Tima free clinic for the first time, serving the homeless. His wife, who is a nurse, has also come to help. Tima is holding a free clinic at Renan Foundation's Taichung office. The office is divided into different areas. Tsuji volunteer from Zimbabwe, Zhu Jingcai, also seizes the occasion to serve at the free clinic. Zimbabwe is a very poor country, and its government does not have funding. Taiwan's health care insurance is not available there. As Zhu talks about how Tsuji has been helping the impoverished people in Zimbabwe, some homeless people want to do their part to help out. Donating their coins, many homeless people have turned from someone who receives help to someone who gives of themselves. 
driving for 40 minutes from Kota Kinabalu to the rental area in Talipak Ria, city volunteers plan to hold a free clinic here. After the previous clinic seven years ago, this is the second time Tsuji has held a free clinic here. About 300 medical volunteers and volunteers will provide services from 13 medical departments. They cover not just uh, doctor's medical service, dental, pharmacy, and they cover, cover even uh, triage, and then they even cover podology, right, checking the feet, and even now dietitian on our food part. I get to um, spread awareness on healthy eating, and I get to teach others how to eat healthily based on their condition. Now. The community hall has been turned into a mobile hospital, relieving the burdens of the residents who lack medical funds or transportation access. We had our blood checks, and children are taking medicines to treat roundworms. We will also see the dentist later. I'm grateful there are events like this one. In eight hours, more than 3,500 people have been served at the free clinic. Thanks to the city volunteers, the homeless and residents who lack medical resources are able to receive much-needed medical attention. In April, Ecuador was severely affected by floods. Tsuji carried out a work for relief program and held an aid distribution to help the hard hit region. In this report, we meet an Ecuadorian volunteer, Jennifer Ruiz, who showed her the responsibility of conducting disaster assessment in the aftermath of the flooding. We had a very difficult winter here. A lot of people are suffering because of the winter. reported back to Taiwan, Martin said, I need you to go back, I need you to really ask questions, I really need you to take pictures, I need you to really do a more in-depth evaluation so we can make a decision where, if we need to go or not. I felt alone and I felt scared. I'm really nobody, nobody knows me, so I was afraid nobody's going to open their doors to me. Why? Who am I? On the phone she asked me when I would go over there. She said she could not stand it anymore. At that moment I immediately changed my mind. I said I was going over there right now. How could I not go over there since it was a very big responsibility? They gave this duty to a bodhisattva who always had a mission to help out. I couldn't explain that kind of worry in words. We not only provided them with aid supplies, but also inspiration as well as hope, so that they can go hand in hand to work and move forward. You can see their love. When I saw them putting the coins into the coin bank, I felt graceful in my heart, and I was deeply moved. I've seen people really crying and, and really saying how, one, how thankful they are for the message that they get because yes, the economic help, the money, it's great, but beyond that, it's for them to start thinking in a different way. When Ecuador was suffering, we went shoulder to shoulder and went hand in hand to come here to help solve the problems. Before the team arrived, we too relied on each other. No matter what happened, at that moment we decided to do so, and we thought we were not alone. So last year we had support and had gotten along with each other for nearly 50 or 60 days. We had developed a relationship like one Dharma family, as well as a brother-sister pair and this relationship will last life after life. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Martin. No matter what happens between us in difficult times, I know in a few minutes I'll be hugging him and loving him as usual because 
difficult times are tough and only if you go through those you know the person is you know is your brother your real brother or sister pain. you are pain eyes <laughs> i love you one, one two, two three, three. Sister! In our next report, we meet a city volunteer, Huang Jingyi, who has served as a media volunteer for nearly 30 years. Thanks to his dedication, city's major events can be well archived. Recently, more than 100,000 of his videotapes were delivered to Jing Siha in Xindian to be archived. In 1989, more than 100 students attended the opening ceremony of Ciji College of Nursing. In 1997, the urine dynamic study room of the Hualien City Hospital officially opened. These videos capture every moment of the past. However, it is not easy to convert these videotapes to digital formats. These tapes include early SP tapes and digital beta cam. When dealing with these tapes, what we have to do first is to rewind them. Sometimes we need to rewind them three to four times so that we can completely convert them to a digital format. All of the video tabs in these boxes and shelves need to be carefully reorganized by volunteers. Organizing them in order so that we can find them easily in the future. After we reorganized the videotapes for the year of 1990, 1991 and 1992, our brother said that he just found one of the year of 1991. To put these individual videotapes in the right order, we had to rearrange the videotapes that we had already sorted. 10 3.5 ton trucks are mobilized to deliver all of these videotapes that were recorded by city volunteer Huang Jingyi. Generally speaking, I've recorded over 100,000 precious videos. If you ask me to find them right now, I don't know where they are, so I'm also unable to present them. This is really a pity. Aside from serving as a photographer for nearly 30 years, Huang Jingyi also established the Ciji Media Volunteers Association and invited many people to capture Ciji's footprint of love in history. Thanks to their endless devotion, Ciji's major events can be severed. Helping those in need is one of Ciji's main missions. Ciji volunteers in Kaohsiung, Taiwan, mobilized to help a disadvantaged mother and her daughter to clean up their home. The kitchen is small but is filled with a lot of food that has expired. Even the sink is filled with dirty dishes and pots because the owner does not clean them. The bathroom is also quite filthy. Miss Zhao and her mother live in this house. Her mother has been sick for a while and Miss Zhao has been looking after her. However, Miss Zhao does not know how to keep the house clean, so her home has become very dirty and grimy. Every time the volunteers visit them, they will tell her they will clean her home. They can sense our contribution to them. Then I suggested to Miss Zhao that we could help her clean her home. Twelve city volunteers came to clean up the house and to enjoy the meaning of the expression, it is better to give than to receive. At first I wondered why we had to do this. Then it wasn't until after we started doing it that I realized being concerned about other people can make you happy. If you can help, you will get something every second. Even this one stock pot is shining brightly because the volunteer never stopped scrubbing it. The home has become clean and pretty again. The house has become clean and I'm happy about it. Thank you. The chief volunteers also give Miss Zhao some fruits and their blessings and encourage her not to be depressed by her mother's condition. Moving our focus to northern Taiwan, an elderly man from Jilong suffers from polio and his home has become cluttered and unsanitary. After the community's borough had asked Ciji for assistance, volunteers mobilized 30 people to clean up the place. 
The home of 68-year-old Mr. Chen is cluttered. As we can see, old newspapers are scattered on older bed and floor. The electric cooker is even placed on this pile of newspapers next to some spoiled food. In the beginning, Mr. Chen refused the assistance from CT, but later he accepted volunteers' request after they communicated with him many times. At first, we tried to comfort him and be affectionate to him. We told him, you are great and you are always frugal. 30 volunteers mobilized to join the cleanup efforts amidst the dust. Volunteers asked Mr. Chen to take a rest outside of the house, but he still feels uneasy. Volunteers put him at ease by asking for his opinions before they discard each item. They even clear out a dead cat, ensuring his living environment is safe and sanitary. Of the electric wires are old and we're worried that electric fire will take place someday. I feel grateful because our living environment has become much better than before and I don't smell that odor now. After cleaning up the home for Mr. Chen, volunteers brought him a bed, though they still worry that he may not get used to the new look of his home. Recently, they take turns to care for him every day in the hope that he can sleep well. Next, we'll join a group of volunteers on a visit to a senior home in Chuibo, a new village in Xizhi of New Taipei. The volunteers and seniors alike look forward to these visits as a chance to share some laughter and enjoy each other's company. As soon as they hear the familiar tunes, these seniors can't help moving. Some even sing and some start to dance, unable to remain seated. One elderly grandmother of 102 years even gets up to shake a leg. <laughs> These volunteers are visiting a senior home here in Suibo, New Village in New Taipei City. They always come full of energy and smiles. Seeing the elderly residents happy also fills the volunteers with joy. Being able to give back fills our hearts with happiness. I can say who is more happy, us or them, but we consider them as our own parents, and so we are all filled with joy. Li Yo Qi and Lai Mei Ling have a family of five, and despite their busy schedules, everyone has joined today to volunteer. They provide professional level massages, which is very pleasing to the elderly. While we give them massages, we can always ask some questions, talk for a while and learn a bit about them. This makes them really happy. Their two daughters also provide a musical performance, which warms everyone's hearts. Standing in their shoes, we're thinking about what we can do to help them. Each of us can all do something different, and we each do what we can to spread a little joy to the seniors here. All the volunteers here cherish these opportunities to share joy in the lives of seniors in their community. City volunteers in Las Vegas, Nevada of the United States held a Buddha Day ceremony inviting members of the public to attend. The event was conducted in both Mandarin and English, so everyone can understand the rituals. We'll leave you with these images at the end of the program. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye.